Hello, this is Amanda Brahman from the Working Well and Capel um, Committee with the Capel Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here today with Dr. Lisa Shoemate. She's a board certified pediatrician from MD Pediatric Associates here in Capel. Thanks for being here, Dr. Shoemate. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are so happy to have you here. So um, I wanted to start with, um, you know, it's been a challenging year for everybody. So what are you doing to uh, set up your actual team there at MD Pediatric Associates for both mental and physical health this year? Yes, man, it has been a very difficult year. Um, we, I mean, I'm just still so shocked at like, how could any of us foreseen this or expected this to happen? Um, and so I think I have spent more time this year than ever thinking about the safety and the well-being of my team. Um, prior to the pandemic, I kind of felt a little confident and like, okay, I know what I'm exposed to. I know what my nurses are exposed to. If I get something from a patient, I kind of understand what risk I'm taking. And then at the beginning of the pandemic, all of a sudden we did not understand what risks are we taking um, and what risks am I exposing my nurses to and my front office to. And so it became a lot more important to me to make sure that they were safe um, and that they were not putting themselves at unnecessary risk. And so um, as the pandemic has gone on and we've learned more about COVID and actually I'm feeling very fortunate as a pediatrician that overall children have done so well during the pandemic. Um, and I don't say that to minimize the children that have been deeply affected, um, mm -hmm. but I'm thankful that, that a lot of them do well. Um, and so as we've gone on, I've kind of thought more about, okay, how can I support our team a little better as in this stressful situation? And I think the answer there is kind of actually in the question is that I, when you share the load and work as a team, man, it makes it so much easier. And so I've tried to focus a little bit more on teamwork um, mm -hmm. and making sure that my nurses are not feeling overwhelmed, which they are at times, but trying to help them when it's overwhelming um, and that they feel like they can ask me questions and that they can go to me for help. Um, and also depending on them. I mean, the nurses are the ones I feel like who, I think about this often, who do everything. You know, I tell people what to do, but man, the nurses are the ones who do it. And that's difficult, right. especially for nurses in ICU settings. Um, who are really, really taking a huge toll. And it's, it's hard to know um, without seeing, seeing it, the toll that they're taking, mm -hmm. helping people, often, especially in adult world, helping people die. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you, it's so difficult to do that because you take it in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I, I hope that we more and more every day are creating a team environment here where we feel like we're sharing the load and not taking it all on ourselves. And I feel really blessed to be at MD Pediatrics because I really feel like our owners and the people in charge take that approach as well. Like I feel supported and I feel like that's very important. Right. Yeah, I really appreciate that approach. And I think that's something that we could all take long past this pandemic to make a healthier workplace for sure. Yeah. And what about in your personal life? You've got a busy practice, you've got a family, how in the world do you find time to make wellness a priority for yourself? Yes, that is quite difficult, as all of you know, especially um, especially this year for a lot of people, <laughs> um, because you have so much more on your plate with people being more at home. Um, but I um, was recently on maternity leave, and so I felt like that'd be a good time to get an annual physical, um, which I definitely recommend that everyone do because it's a, just a great time to check in, make sure that things are going well, make sure that there's nothing that you need to change to maintain your health long-term. And um, so definitely recommend that, especially for kids, but really for, especially for adults too. It's just because I work with kids <laughs> that I especially <laughs> say with kids. Um, and so I did that at Old Town Family Practice recently, okay. and I had to laugh because I came back and told my husband, oh, she asked me, the nurse practitioner asked me all of the questions that I asked people that I really thought I would have answers to. And I was just sitting in silence. Like I do not have <laughs> answers to any of these questions. Um, in particular, when she asked me what I do to take care of myself and I was like, ooh, that hits, hits hard. Right. Um, and so she recommended um, doing yoga, which I've definitely recommended in the past and did not take my own advice. And so I started doing that and I felt like, man, that, that was important. That was an important piece of life that I was missing. And I definitely don't have time to do it every day, but when I do, it's just, it is helpful and healthy to take time for yourself to move your body and also to take time to be gentle with yourself, which I also really hope 
that um, I want my parents to hear mm -hmm. um, because this is such a difficult year. There's so much pressure on yeah. parents to feel like you're helping your children through this difficult time. Um, and I just want to remind people that it, it kind of starts with being gentle and compassionate towards yourself too. Right. So that's kind of what I'm working on now. Um, in addition to eating more vegetables, but, um, I think taking time for yourself is important as well. Yeah. We can all take some cues from that for sure. And then what about expanding to your families? I know that you must talk to families about this all the time with the different ranges of kids. How, how do you encourage them to make all this priority in their lives? This is definitely my um, favorite thing to talk about because obviously that's what we do. That's our goal. That's like why you go into pediatrics is to try to make the world better for children. Um, and so I love working with families. I think um, I was thinking this morning coming into this talk, like I think it's hard to pick a favorite thing about mm -hmm. my job, but man, I, I, if I had to say it right now, it's that I love getting to watch children grow. I love watching families grow. I like feel so proud of the kids every time, even though every kid does every milestone, like every time they come in, it doesn't get all the way, like, man, you're rolling over. That is so fun. Or you're starting to talk. That's so fun. Or you're graduating high school and going to college. That's so fun. Like, and so it's a real blessing. I feel like to be able to be part of their lives. Um, and I'm thankful for the opportunity that parents give us to be part of their lives too. Um, and so this year that's changed a lot. Um, my priorities in each clinic visit, I feel like have changed. So mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic, I feel like I had a, um, like a list that I would go through at each age, almost like, like rapid firing things that I felt like I needed to tell the parents so that they they would know everything. So I was doing my job to make sure that they had the information they needed. Um, and then through this pandemic, a lot of those things became a lot less important. Yeah. Um, and I'm more concerned about my, the parents' mental and emotional health and more concerned about the children's mental and emotional health and mm -hmm. much more concerned about the family functioning. Mm -hmm. um, and so those really are, and then I was looking back and being like, you know, that's not new to the pandemic. I, I think that probably was more important from the beginning. It just kind of shed light on the fact of how important it really is for children is to have that positive relationship with their family. Mm -hmm. And so um, I feel like, again, that kind of starts with compassion. I was talking to one of my good friends recently and she reminded me, cause I think it's hard for me to remember what it's like to be a patient. Um, she, yeah, she reminded me that when she goes to the pediatrician, even though her pediatrician is like helpful and she doesn't say anything negative, she feels judged. She feels mm -hmm. like I need to be a good mom. I want my pediatrician to think that I'm doing a good job. And I was like, oh man, I don't remember that. Like, I don't feel that way when people come in, but I can definitely see why they do. And so it's become a lot more important to me this year to make sure that moms and dads know that I think they're doing a great job um, and it's and I'm here to help you I'm I um, and I think it actually starts with moms and dads feeling like they are doing a good job because it's so hard and so that's one of my big goals right now is to make sure that people feel they feel supported too and they are doing a good job I've been so impressed with how our families have been handling the pandemic and all the things that they've been doing for their children and I can see every day how hard they're working to make the right decisions for their family. Um, and it's definitely not, it's been harder this year than ever. And so I think having compassion for what the parents are going through is um, something that I'm trying to do a lot more lately. And the second thing is that child, because I think it starts with the parent. So the second thing is, is addressing the child, the parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm. I was really kind of encouraged at the beginning of the pandemic because I had a few teenagers come in and I was like, man, how are you doing? This is a really difficult time for teenagers because social development is truly so important for them. I think sometimes we I think it's hard to be a teenager. Sometimes yeah. we're like, you need to grow up, but don't grow up too fast, but grow up at the same time. And, um, and we kind of want to say, you know, why are your friends so important? They're important because it's, they're how, how we develop as human beings is like, we go from family is everything to like, oh, there's a bigger world. And it's what they're supposed to be doing at this age is in exploring their social environment. And so at the beginning I was, well, I'm still concerned about them, but so every visit <laughs> I'm concerned about them, but they um, had several tell me, you know what, this has been kind of nice to like play games with my family and to eat dinner together. And I was like, 
man, we're so busy and understandably so that like we forget. And I think parents forget that their teenagers pretend like they don't like them, but actually think they do. <laughs> like, right. Exactly. They want to spend some time with them. Not like all of your time needs to be family time, but it's, it's still important to have quality family time. Um, and so that leads to the next thing. It's really hard also to be a parent of a toddler and a middle middle child and um, not middle child from birth order but like middle childhood um and so I have been thinking about this recently had another friend remind me of this um is basically just spending 10 minutes a day with each child doing whatever that child wants to do and that's a concept that comes from actually an evidence-based um program called parent-child interaction therapy um, so there's actually a lot of evidence behind that i think as parents it comes from a good place that we feel pressured to make sure that we're doing everything we can at all hours of the day to train our child so that they will succeed and i just want to reassure parents i like I don't know that I've ever seen a teenager or a child and thought to myself, they're not going to make it. Like they are not prepared for life. Like I never, they are, they will be prepared and they're going to be fine. Um, and so I just want to give you the freedom to just take 10 minutes with them and enjoy them. And don't feel like you need to make sure they're doing the right thing in that 10 minutes. Or if they throw Cheerios all over the place, like take 10 minutes and let them throw Cheerios. Um, and so just do that 10 minutes every day without correcting them at all and just engaging on their level, whatever that level is. Um, and then after that, you can pick up. You'll find it's actually kind of difficult to do 10 minutes. You're, you really? look at your day and it's like 10 minutes, that's no big deal. It's kind of hard to take 10 minutes every day with every child, but I feel like it's important. So um, overall though, I feel like, man, this year, a lot of asking people about, I still ask about vegetables, but a lot of asking people about vegetables <laughs> and how much screen that time they're getting is a lot less important than making sure they have some quality time um, and making sure that they have what they need. I also do just want to say, even though this is not a question, how much I appreciate teachers. Um, yeah, this year. Yeah. And they, I feel like they, and I will try not to cry when I talk about teachers apparently, but they, oh. uh, I'm very thankful as a pediatrician, I am going to cry, darn it. <laughs> very thankful as a pediatrician, um, how hard they have worked to keep our kids safe. Absolutely. Um, and they have done it, and I want them to know that they've succeeded in that. Um, and additionally, because it's more than keeping them safe from COVID, they have created an environment where kids who need to be in school can go. Um, yes. And I appreciate that. And I hope you will not um, judge me for crying about it. <laughs> so, uh, nope. I appreciate them. <laughs> yes. And so um, I'm just so thankful um, to be a part of this community and to like have the opportunity to work with the families that we do. Um, and I just want teachers especially to know like we appreciate how much you've done this year. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, yes, you're welcome. Dr. Schumann, this has been amazing. I so appreciate your vulnerability, your honesty, and just all the grace that you're extending to your team, yourself, and your families. Um, it's really inspirational and something that I think that we can all use now, but also into the future. Thank so you thank so you. much. Thank you so much for having me. It was yes. great to meet you, and um, I'm so thankful to be part of Coppell. Yes, my pleasure.